Hi, it's John Vu, and in this lesson we're going to go through Don't Wanna Fight by Alabama Shakes from Trinity Rock and Pop Drums Grade 3. Okay, so looking at the sheet music in the book, song title, top of the page, so the left hand side. Underneath that you've got intro in a box, just letting you know the first section of the song we're going to be playing is the intro. Beneath that you've got the style, genre or feel of the piece. So in this case it says grooving, okay, so it just gives you an idea of how the piece is going to sound and how like the feel you need to portray as you play it. Okay, so you've got to give it like a grooving feel. Uh, this song beside that it says a quarter note equals a hundred. That's the tempo of the piece. So you've got a uh, hundred quarter note beats per minute. Okay, so hundred beats per minute, fairly fast, not too fast though. So it's kind of like a, a sort of standard sort of rock and pop uh, tempo that is 100 BPM and then next to that it says two bars counting in brackets that's just letting you know when you play it with the track you're going to get two bars of counting before the piece starts okay so um, beneath that you've got the first bar of music so at the start of the bar you've got your percussion clef there letting you know it's drum notation on the stave and then beside that it's the there's the time signature so it's four 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 at the top tells you there's four beats in the bar Four at the bottom tells you each one of those beats is a quarter note. So you've got four quarter note beats in the bar. Okay, then first bar of music, you've got a thick black line, which is a multi-bar rest. Okay, so above the bar, you can see the number four there. So that's telling you to rest for four bars. Okay, so first four bars, we just rest, but you've got to make sure you keep counting the bars, okay? So you've got four quarter note beats in the bar. So you need to count four bars there for, those, uh, for that four bar rest. And then in the next bar, we've got another four bar rest. Okay, so we rest for another four bars and beneath that bar, it says plus keys in brackets. Okay, so that's where the keyboard comes in. So when you hear the keyboard, when you play it with the track, you'll know exactly where you are. So these cues just help us um, follow, the, um, follow the music. Okay, so we've got four bars of rest and then another four bars of rest. So we've got eight bars of rest in that first line of the piece. So like I said, make sure you keep count of those bars because it's easy when you're resting for your mind to wonder, think about other things, think about, okay, when I come in with a groove, um, how shall I play it? What should I do here? And then suddenly the track's going and you're thinking, ah, oh, how many bars is that? Okay, so just make sure from the get-go, as soon as you come in with the track, you, you're keeping count of those, uh, those bars. Okay, so eight bars of rest in the first line, then we've got a double bar line at the end of the first line, letting you know there's a musical change, and then we come into line two at bar nine, and that's where the first drum groove kicks in. So that's where we come in with the drums. Okay, now we've got a, in the first bar, okay, uh, we've got a one bar groove. We've got eighth notes with the right hand, first eighth note on the crash cymbal, and the rest of the eighth notes in the bar on the hi-hat. Okay, so first of all, we'll take out the crash on one. We'll just play the cymbals on the hi-hat. Okay, so eighth notes, you got one and two and three and four and with that lead hand. And then bass and snare to rhythm, quarter note on one on the bass drum, eighth note on the snare drum on two, eighth note on the bass drum on the end of two, quarter note on the bass drum on the three, and then you got quarter note on the snare drum on four. So standard back beat on the snare drum on two and four. So that groove sounds like this, eighth note groove, one, two, Three, four. Okay, so make sure um, you're comfortable with that groove. And beneath the bar, you can see it says MF. That's short for mezzo forte, which means half loud. Okay, so that's about your normal playing level. So you crash in with that groove. And then in the next bar, you've got the same groove, but we've just got an open hi-hat on the and of four. Okay, so you're just going to lift that left foot on the end of four to open those hi-hats. And then in the next bar, again, you've got the same groove. And you can see the plus sign above the one, the first hi-hat on the downbeat of one. So that's where you close the hi-hat. Okay, so we're going to open the hi-hat uh, in bar 10 on the end of four. And we're going to keep it open all the way to the one of the following bar in bar 11. Okay, so you just need to make sure you open for the right length of time, that eighth note. So open right on the end of four, close on the next one. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just try those two bars. So bars 10 and 11 sound like this with the open hi-hat. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you get that nice open hi-hat sound for an eighth note. And then in the next bar, so bar 12, you've got a one bar repeat. So you repeat bar 11 again. Okay, so you play it again and then Coming into the next line, same groove, so we crash in again 
at bar 13 with the same groove. In the next bar, you've got that open hi-hat on the end of four again. In the next bar, you've got the closed hi-hat on the one again, and we've got another open hi-hat in this bar on the end of three for an eighth note. So you open on the end of three, close on the four. So you're gonna open, close on the back beat with the snare drum. Okay, so you've got open on its own, close with the snare drum. So that's on the end of three, so that'd be one, two, three. Okay, so you get that nice sizzling open eye at sound for that eighth note. Okay, so that bar, so bar 15, sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we'll try the previous bar as well, so bar 14 and 15. So in bar 14, you've got the open eye hat on the end of four, and in bar 15, open eye hat on the end of three. Okay, so let's try those two bars. One, two, three, four. Okay, so make sure you get that nice open hi hat sound for both of those places. Okay, and then in the next bar, same groove, but you're just ending with a quarter note on the four. Okay, so you haven't got that eighth note on the end of four uh, in this bar. Okay, so that bar, so bar 16 sounds like this. One, two, three, four. And in the next bar, we've got a one bar rest. Okay, so you just rest for the final bar of that line, okay? And beneath the bar, it says shaker in brackets. So again, that's a cue just to help you. So with the track, you'll hear a shaker in that bar. All right, then you've got a double bar line, which means there's gonna be a musical change, okay? So we come into a new section after that. So we've come to the end of the intro section there. So we're gonna put that all together, okay? So we'll play those two lines, because obviously in the first line, we're just resting. So obviously, uh, we, we don't need to do that until we play it with the track. So we'll do lines two and three to put those two um, groove lines together. So just hold that solid eighth note groove, nice even subdivision on the hi-hat. Obviously, you've got the crash at the start of each line just to accentuate the start of a four-bar phrase. And you've got those open hi-hats. Just keep it nice, neat and tidy, and you need to give it a nice groove and feel, okay? So really put your soul into this groove and make it feel good. Okay, so let's try the, uh, the intro lines two and three, so bars nine to 16. And now we'll try the intro in time with the backing track. Okay, so remember you've got a two bar count in, so you'll hear one, two, one, two, three, four, then the track will start. So we've got a four bar rest, so make sure you keep count of those four bars. And then we've got another four bars of rest where the keys come in, so you'll hear the keys come in at that point. All right, so you've got four bars, keep count, four bars rest again to keep count of those. And then we come into line two, and that's where the groove comes in. So crash on the one, keep a grooving, nice, solid groove feel, and you've got MF, all right, so mezzo forte, uh, half uh, half loud, and just make sure those open hi-hats sound uh, neat and tidy. All right, now, four bar phrases are the kind of standard, uh, especially in uh, this style of music. So you've got four bars of rest, another four bars of rest, then you've got a four bar groove in the second line, and then you've got another set of four bars uh, for, the, for the groove in the third line, and then you've got one bar at the end for the shaker, okay? So where we rest and we just hear that shaker. Okay, so it's kind of like extending that last phrase from four bars to five bars. Okay, so just make sure you're aware of that. Okay, uh, the feel is gonna be a bit different because you'll feel the four bars and then it's like having an extra bar, that, that final one bar rest. So it like extends the phrase. Okay, so let's try the intro in time with the backing track.
So after the intro, we come into line four, which starts at bar 18, and you can see we've got verse in a box there, so we're on a new section of the song, we're onto the verse now, and now we've got a new one bar groove to play, okay? So it's still an eighth note groove, so with the right hand, you're playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, and now we've got a syncopated rhythm on the bass and snare drum. Okay, so remember syncopated means there's gonna, it's gonna go against the flow of the music, okay? There's gonna be notes in unexpected places. So normally our backbeat on the snare drum, our standard backbeat is on two and the four. For this groove, we're playing the snare drum on the ah of one, okay, and the four, okay? So we've got one off beat, which is on the ah of, uh, of one, and then one is on the beat, on that four, okay? So you've, got, you've still got that standard backbeat on the four, but you've got that displaced backbeat on the ah of one. So first of all, we're gonna get those two snare notes in along with the right hand playing the, the hi-hat, the eighth note hi-hats, okay? So the two snares, would the hi-hat sound like this? One, two, three, four. Okay, so really make sure you're comfortable playing the ah of one. Okay, so counting the rhythm, it'd be one and ah two and three and four and one and ah two and three and four and. So make sure that ah of one is right in the middle of the and of one and the two. Okay, the downbeat of two, right in the middle of those two eighth notes. Okay, you don't want it leaning towards one eighth note. Okay, you want it right in the middle of those two. And then the bass drum, you're playing a dotted eighth note on the bass drum on the one, so that dotted eighth note will last until the out of one where the snare drum comes in for the sixteenth note, okay? So that's the first beat, dotted eighth note on one, snare drum on the out of one for a sixteenth note, and then you've got a quarter note rest on two, a sixteenth note rest on three, the downbeat of three, and then you come in with a bass drum on the E of three for a sixteenth note. So again, that's a syncopated note, it's in an unexpected place on that E, of, um, of three, and then you've got eighth note on the and of three. So that third beat, rest on the three, play the E for a sixteenth, and then play the and for an eighth note. So three, E, and. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So make sure you can play that E, and. So two notes closely uh, close together there, so that's quite tough to play. And obviously you need to make sure that and of three on the bass drum lines up with the and of three on the hi-hat, okay? So everything's syncing up nicely. So we'll try right hand on the hi-hat and the bass drum now. So bass drum playing the downbeat of one, the E of three, and the and of three, okay? So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's tough on its own as well, so make sure you can do that. And like I said, the important bit is the E of three on the bass drum, right in the middle of the downbeat of three and the end of three, and then that and of three on the bass drum, lining up with that and of three on the hi-hat. All right, so we're gonna play all three parts now, now, all three parts now. A flows on hi-hat, and then the uh, bass drum and snare drum rhythm. So the groove sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so really nice groove there, that offbeat snare drum on the out of one really kind of gives it uh, the, uh, the feel. Okay, so really nice groove. So that's a one bar groove, so you wanna get that down, and then we've got three one bar repeats on that line. Okay, so you just repeat that groove another three times, and you can see the number four in brackets above the fourth bar. Okay, so that'll be the fourth time you're playing the groove on that third one bar repeat. So again, that's just a cue to help you follow, uh, follow the music. So you'll feel the fourth bar because we naturally feel four, four bar phrases. So when you feel you're on the fourth time of playing the groove, you can look at the music and see the number four there and you know you're there. Okay, so it's just a nice cue to help uh, keep track of uh, the one bar repeats. And then in the next line, so starting at bar 22, you've got three more one bar repeats. You, you play that same groove another three times, and then we come into the final bar of, of that line, 
and you've got slight change up where we're just adding a bass drum on the and of four, okay? So that snare drum on the downbeat of four becomes an eighth note, and then we've got another eighth note on the end of four, okay? So that groove sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that bass drum on the end of four just ch changes up the groove, refreshes it a bit, so that would be the second fourth bar. Okay, so again, sometimes when you're playing a groove quite a few times, it's just nice to give it a nice subtle change just to refresh the groove, and that's what that bar does, adding that and of four on the bass drum. Okay, then we come into the next line, starting at bar 26, and we go back to that original verse groove, okay? We crash in on the one, play the same groove, and then we've got three one bar repeats. Remember, when you repeat that groove, we don't repeat the crash, okay? We just carry on on the hi-hat, okay? So you've got three one bar repeats. We play that groove for four, uh, four times for that line, and then we come into the final line of page one. We've got another three one bar repeats. We're playing the same groove another three times. And then in the final bar of the first page, you've got half a bar of the grooves. So you're still playing that one and a to and. And then we've got two beats, which is half a bar for, um, of slash notation, which means we, we can improvise. And above the slash notation, it says fill. So you just want to play a two beat fill, okay? So any two beat fill, which will complement the feel of the music. So half a bar of groove, one and a to and, and then half a bar of fill, three, four, any fill you want to play. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to play the whole verse. All right, so we, we, we come in with the groove. We don't crash at the start of the groove for the verse. We just, we're on the hi-hat, repeat for six, uh, six bars. And then we've got that change up in the eighth bar of the groove. Okay, then we come into bar 26. Again, crash to uh, reset the groove. And then we've got six one bar repeats again. And then in the eighth bar, we play the... Um, the two beat fill, okay, that change up again. So we've got those change ups every eight bars in that groove, okay? So we've got the first change up on the first eighth bar with that extra bass drum on the end of four, and then we've got the second change up in the next eighth bar where we're playing that two beat fill, okay? So that brings us to the end of the verse. You can see a double bar line at the end of the final bar of uh, the first page, okay? So that's the end of a musical section. So we're gonna put the whole verse together now, that syncopated groove. And now we'll try the verse in time with the backing track. Okay, so this is a tough groove, so make sure you've got it down before you put it with the music, because it needs to be neat and tidy. Okay, so it really complements the feel of the music, this groove, it's really important to make sure you're playing it right. Okay, so get it down first, and then we'll try the verse in time with the backing track. And now we come into page two, which starts at bar 34. So above bar 34, you can see chorus in a box. So we're onto a new section of the song. So this is the chorus, and you can also see the sign there, that senyo sign. Okay, so we need to just take note of that because we know we're going to be coming back to that sign. Okay, so we've got one bar groove again for the chorus. So the one bar groove is the same groove we played in the intro. Okay, so we're crashing in on the one and playing that same intro groove on the hi-hat, that eighth note groove. And then we've got two one bar repeats. So again, when we've got the one bar repeat, we don't repeat the crash on the one. We just carry on 
on the hi-hat with that groove. And then in the final bar of the, the first line of page uh, two, which is bar 38, 37, sorry. Okay, so uh, bar 37, we got two, two, uh, two beats of slash notation, so we improvise, and then we've got two beats of a, a, a fill. Okay, so the fill, we've got eighth notes on the three, so that's three and the and of three, and then we've got two sixteenth notes and an eighth note on the four. Okay, so that'd be 40 and. So you play improvised groove for the first two beats, and then we've got three and 40 and for the two beat fill. Okay, so you're gonna play right left on the snare for the for the fill, and then we're gonna play right left on the snare drum for the four E, and then come across to the floor tom on the and of four with the right hand. Okay, so that two beat fill sounds like this. One, two. So three and forty and. So, you, so if you played that same groove that we, we played in bars 34, 35, and 36 for the first two beats of that bar, okay, uh, the whole bar will sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, but obviously you can improvise for those first two beats of the groove in that bar, so bar 37. Okay, so coming into the next line, we crash into the same one bar groove, and then we've got three one bar repeats on that line. Okay, and again, you've got that number four in brackets there, letting you know that that's where you are when you're on the fourth time of playing the groove. And then we've got a double bar line at the end of that bar, which says it's gonna be a musical, musical change. And then above the bar, you can see as well, it says to coda with the coda sign. So again, we just need to take note of that. Okay, we don't need to do anything with that in the minute. We come into the next line where we come back into the syncopated groove that we played in the verse, but it's a more broken down version. It's more stripped back, okay? So we've got that same uh, first beat, that one and the out of one on the snare drum, and then we've got quarter note rest on two, quarter note rest on three, and we've got quarter note on the four on the back beat, okay? So the same snare drum notes, we've just got one bass drum though on a down beat of one, and we're also playing the eighth notes on the ride cymbal this time. Okay, so a nice stripped back version of that syncopated groove that we played in the verse. So it sounds like this. Uh, so uh, the one bar groove at bar 42. One, two, three, four. Okay, and beneath that bar it says MP, so that's short for mezzo piano, which means half soft. So you want to bring the dynamic level down for that groove. So it's stripped back and it's also uh, brought down in dynamic. Okay, so less energy in that groove. And you've got three one bar repeats for the rest of that line. So you're repeating that groove, that one bar groove, another three times to play it four times in total. And again, you've got that number four in brackets above the fourth time of playing the groove, which would be the third one bar repeat. Okay, so you just play that groove for four bars for that line, and then at the end of that line, you've got a double bar line, let you know another, there's another musical change, and that's uh, because we come to the end of the section, which is the chorus. Okay, so we're gonna put the whole chorus together now. So we crash in with that intro groove, and then we've got that two beat fill, and then we crash into the same groove, we play it for four bars, and then we change the groove. So make sure you switch to that ride symbol for the groove at bar 42, and you've got that nice syncopated note on the out of one again. Okay, so let's try the whole chorus. And now we'll try the chorus in time with the backing track. Okay, so keep a nice solid feel for your groove. Make sure the eighth note's evenly spaced. Make sure the feel is placed at the right point. So on that three and four of that fourth bar of the chorus. And then we crash in to reset the same groove. We play it for another four bars. And then make sure you've got a nice transition into that groove where we're switching to the ride cymbal, playing that syncopated snare drum note on the out of one to give that nice change up on the backbeat sound. Okay, and also make sure you bring the dynamic level down on that groove at bar 42 to mezzo piano. Okay, so at the start of the chorus, you're at mezzo forte, half loud, and you wanna make sure you drop to mezzo piano for, uh, for that uh, third line of the chorus. Okay, so let's try it in time with the backing track. Don't waste my time. I don't wanna fight no more. 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 Don't wanna fight no more. I
So now we come into the fourth line of page two, so you can see above the fourth line, so above 46, you can see guitar solo in a box there. Okay, so a new section of the song, we're at, uh, we're at the guitar solo, and now we've got a one bar groove for this section, and we've got quarter notes with the lead, with the lead hand, and they are playing the ride bell. So you wanna make sure you're striking the ride bell with the side of the stick, so you're hearing that really high pitch pingy sound for this groove, okay, on the ride bell. And then beneath those quarter notes on the ride bell, you've got quarter note on the bass drum on one, quarter note on the snare drum on two, quarter note rest on three, eighth note on the snare drum on four, eighth note on the bass drum on the and of four. Okay, so that groove sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So make sure you've got those evenly spaced quarter notes and you're also feeling that quarter note rest on the third beat, okay, on the bass and snare drum. So you've got that three on its own on the ride bell for that third beat. Okay, then in the next bar, you've got the same groove. In the next bar, very similar groove, you just haven't got that bass drum on the and of four, okay? So it's a more stripped back version of the groove and then in the next bar, you've got the same bar, okay? So without that bass drum on the and of four. So Two bars with the end of four, two bars without the end of four. So we'll try the whole line. And beneath the bar, you've got MF, short for mezzo forte, so we're back to half loud for this groove. So we'll try that line. So bars 46, 47, 48, and 49. Sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're back to that standard back beat on the two and the four, and then in the next line of, of the guitar solo, we go back to the groove with the and of four on the bass drum as well. And then we've got the and of four on the bass drum again for the next bar, and then in the next bar, we're taking out that bass drum on the and of four, and in the next bar, we've got uh, three beats of groove and then a one beat fill. Okay, so we'll look at that, that bar with the one beat fill, so bar 53, so first three beats of the groove, so you've got one, two, three, set up a sound like this, one, two, three, four. And on the fourth beat, we've got two sixteenth notes on the snare drum and an eighth note on the high tom or small tom. So that'd be 40 and, you're gonna put that right, left, right. Okay, so that bar sounds like this, one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, forty and. And then we've got a double bar line because that's the end of a musical section there. Okay, that's the end of the guitar solo. So we're gonna put the whole guitar solo together. Okay, so you've got eight bars for that guitar solo, two lines at mezzo forte, quarter note groove on that ride bell, ending with that one beat fill. Okay, so let's try the whole guitar solo section. And now we'll try the guitar solo section in time with the backing track. Okay, so remember, this is a guitar solo, so as the drummer, we're just supporting the solo with our groove. Okay, so make sure it's a real solid groove with a evenly spaced quarter note feel to it. Okay, and we're at mezzo forte, end with that nice one beat feel. And above the final bar of the guitar solo section, you can see it says DS Alcoda, which is short for Del Senor Alcoda. So after that bar, after you finish the guitar solo section, we go back to the sign, which is at bar 34, the start of the chorus. 
Okay, so we play through from the start of the chorus, and then after the second bar of the chorus, you can see it says Takoda. Okay, so obviously we made note of that when we passed it earlier. So when we play that second line of the chorus after the guitar solo section, we go to the coda, which is at the end of the piece. Okay, so it starts at bar 54, and we go back to that intro and chorus groove, that eighth note groove. We've got a one bar repeat, so we play it again without the crash on the one that time, and then we end with a crash on the one in the final bar. Okay, with the bass drum as well. So let's try that final part of the song. Okay, so after we played the guitar solo, we're gonna go back to the start of the chorus, play the first two, two lines of the chorus, and then go to the coda. Okay, there's three bars of the coda. All right, so let's try that now. And now we'll try that with the backing track. So that's the end of the piece. We'll try putting the whole piece together. First of all, without the track, so we'll start it from bar nine. Okay, so we're gonna just make sure we can flow from section to section. And the tricky part of this piece is obviously the open hi-hats in the intro section, and then the syncopated groove in the verse section. And then we go back to a more kind of straightforward uh, feel in the chorus. And then, uh, and then towards the end, obviously we're back to that syncopated stripped back feel. Okay, that dynamic change as well. We've got a different groove in the uh, guitar solo section, so a nice quarter note groove. Just make sure you get that nice high pingy sound on the ride bell. And then we finish with the chorus, and then we skip to the coda. Okay, so remember we don't play the whole chorus, we just play the first two lines until we're sent to the coda where it says to coda. Okay, then we finish with the coda, those last three, three bars. All right, so let's try the whole piece now.
And now we'll try the whole piece in time with the backing track. Okay, so remember you've got two bar counting, and then we've got four bars of rest, another four bars of rest where the keys come in, and then we're in with our intro groove. Okay, so again, just make sure you're comfortable transitioning from section to section where you've got different grooves, okay, and the feel changes up, all right, and you can flow through uh, the whole song. All right, so let's try the whole piece in time with the backing track. So I hope you enjoyed that piece. It's a great track to play. That syncopated groove's got a great feel to it. Okay, so remember we practice through all the parts at song tempo, which is 100 beats per minute. So make sure you bring them down to a comfortable tempo for you. Okay, especially that syncopated groove. Just make sure everything's feeling nice. Okay, nice and slow so it's feeling good. If it's feeling good, it's gonna sound good. Okay, and that's what we want. We wanna develop your sound as a drummer. You don't just wanna rush through and be able to play this song at a sloppy standard. You wanna develop your drumming, okay? So really take it at a comfortable tempo, and then once you're comfortable, bump it up until you get to that song tempo, then try it with the music. All right, so have fun with this lesson, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>